Dragons everywhere. In this video, I'm going to show you how to use Luminar as a plugin for Photoshop if you don't already do it. But in this particular case, I am going to use it as a finishing touch to a composite image. So most of the work here will be done in Photoshop, but it's relatively quick work and there's many ways of doing this. This is just one way that I'm doing it to make it quick for the video. Hopefully you'll pick something up from that. The dragons I'm using, because of the lockdown, we're creating a lot of dragons recently to use in the imagery and just going back through my old images and thinking, yep, dragon will look good there or a dragon will look good in this. And so I created a, a dragon pack and the dragon pack, I'll put a link below down in the description if you want to purchase the dragon pack. There's 15 dragons in it in total, plus a couple of backgrounds. But for this, I'm going to show you, this video is going to be a tutorial using one of the dragons from the dragon pack. But it applies to anything, you don't have to use dragons in this. I'm just going to show you how Luminar complements Photoshop as a plugin. So without further ado, let's dive right in. What I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to turn this image here into this image here and a few simple steps using Luminar as a plugin for Photoshop. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to delete these layers. So the first thing I'm going to do is go into the dragon pack. I'm going to get into dragon standing and I'm going to grab the dragon named Defiance and drop him in place. I'm then going to scale up the image to where I'm quite happy with it. And you'll notice the shadows are already with this dragon. They're not in all the dragons though but they are with this one. So I'm going to click OK. For me, what I want here is I want to darken some of the areas in here. Now there's many ways of doing this, but the way I'm going to do this is by holding down Command in my keyboard, selecting the dragon, which you will notice selects the shadow as well, or the depth, the darkest areas of the shadow. But that's fine for this. And the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to cre create a new layer. Knowing that this selection is sitting on this layer, if I paint in red for example, it will only affect that selection and as you see it's on that layer. So what I'm going to do is I am going to go in and I'm going to change my brush to black and I'm going to take the opacity right down and I'm just going to check that it is no hardness in the brush. Yep. I'm going to take it down. I'm doing this this time for this video with my mouse. I Normally I'll use my Wacom tablet, but just for the purposes of this video, I'm going to use the mouse. And I'm then just going to paint over, very gently, some of the areas. And I know this is bleeding onto the shadow area as well, but for the purposes of this, I'm actually okay with that. And I'll just paint in here. As I say, there's many ways to do this. I could have selected the dragon, removed the shadow, or I could have created a second layer, darkened it down using curves and then erased it out using a mask. But I'm just going to do it this way, just for the purposes of this video. And I'll darken that down there a wee bit as well. And there. So you get the idea of this. And you can see there how much it's affected. If I go deselect, so there we have it. That's what you see just now. That's what we have now. Right, I'm going to reselect that and increase it up here ever so slightly. So if I just go into select, and because I deselected this, reselect still there. Go back into that layer. And I'm going to increase the brush size and I'm just going to paint up there slightly. Same with here. So it's not too much. And although you see that that's darkening that out, I'm going to go deselect again. I can play around with the opacity here just to get the effect that I'm after. And for me, I'm quite happy with that. So that's a relatively quick way of doing that. As I say, there's many other ways of doing it. And when I first did it, I did it without the shadow. So I painted in my own shadows as well. But there's a relatively quick way of doing it. So that there. The next thing we want to do is we want to take this into Luminar. But before I do that, I'm going to knock out some of the colour. I can do that in Luminar, but I'm going to 
base this tutorial around Photoshop and then Luminar just to finish it off. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to adjust the hue saturation of this just ever so slightly before I get into Luminar. So the next thing I'm going to do is go into the adjustments panel, choose hue saturation and for this I am going to pull back here, the reds, just slightly. And you'll notice if I pull these right back, they're affecting inside the mouth as well. But I'm going to show you what I'm going to do with that. So I'm pulling them back just ever so slightly. In Photoshop, when you use an adjustment layer, it creates a mask. I want the colours to come back here. So if I get into that mask and white reveals, black conceals. So I want to conceal what's just happened in the mouth there. So if I take the brush size down and I paint back in, you'll see the reds are beginning to come back in there. And it just shows that it helps the image. So there we have that. If I turn that off, you can see what it's done. If I turn that off, you should see a slight difference in the image. Right, before we take it into Luminar, we have to compress it all into one layer. So what we do is Shift, Alt, Command, E on a Mac, and that happens. And I'm gonna rename this Luminar Edit. I'm going to click that there. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going up to Filter and into my plugins and I'm going to get into Luminar 4. Okay, that's us in Luminar. Before I do my edit, I'm going to show you what else can happen with this Dragon Pack. If I go into AI Augmented Sky and choose Object Selection and go down to Load Custom Image, I have the Flying Dragons here. So I'll just choose Dragon Turn and Flight. Click Open. He'll drop in in the background as you see. Place object, scale them down in size, I'll rotate them slightly, just a bit there, bring them over there, so you can actually add dragons in as objects as well. Depending on your composition, the larger dragons or the standing dragons would drop into the AI augmented sky. So that's down to you, that's down to your compositional elements. But what I'm not going to do is leave that dragon there. So I'm going to get rid of it. What I'm actually going to do with this image is just a simple, quick edit. And I'm going to get into looks. And for me, I'm going to get into Cine 1. And then, from Cine 1, I'm going to get into colour. I'm going to advanced settings. If you check, see the blues are already pulled back with this. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to pull the saturation back slightly. And that gives more impact with the final image. That's me, I'm done with this one. What I'm going to do is click apply. Hopefully you get something from that and hopefully you enjoyed watching a relatively quick process where I use in my workflow the two softwares to complement each other. This one here is aimed more towards the Photoshop side with Luminar to complement it. And this is part one of a two part video example tutorial. The second example tutorial will be in Luminar entirely. And again, it will be the dragons. It'll be a different background this time, but just to show you how I use Luminar as a standalone as well to do my composites. And as I said, if you're interested in the dragon pack, the link's in the description below. Hopefully you enjoyed that video and if you'd like to check out more videos in the channel below, please feel free. If you're currently not a subscriber, please consider subscribing because that would be absolutely fantastic. Stay safe, thanks again for watching and see you in the next video.